I'm going to uh, talk with you a little bit about creating a better world for animals. I want to cut right to the chase. We need your help. I hate to get too serious too quick, but we need your help. We need your help to create a better world for animals. I'm going to ask you right off the bat, will you help us? That's what, yeah? Awesome. That's what I wanted to hear. You know, the other day, I was going to show you this. Um, I was reading this book, this book on woodpeckers. And uh, my friend was sitting there with me, and he said, you're reading a book on woodpeckers? I said, yeah. He said, they write a book about woodpeckers? I said, absolutely. He said, it's a bird. It pecks wood. I mean, does the, the book have two pages or what? I mean, what could they write about it? And it got me to thinking about animals and about how amazing they are. I mean, I love animals, I love wildlife, and it's a no-brainer to me. They're the most amazing things out there. But then I got to realizing other people might not think like that. They may wonder, you know, why would you read about animals, or why would you study animals, or why would you care about animals? So I thought I'd share with you this. My oh, one side. Let me just get this. There it is. Step back a second from animals, and this common plant, a sidewalk weed. You see these all the time. They're everywhere. You step over them everywhere. You know what E.O. Wilson, the famous Harvard biologist, says about the sidewalk weed? It's more complex than anything ever created by man. The sidewalk weed, more intricate, more complex, more highly designed than anything ever engineered by mankind. More complex than the most complex machine we've ever created, the space shuttle, the sidewalk weed. Now when you think about that, think about other things and how, much, and how amazing they are. What about a chameleon? Look at that. Isn't that incredible? What about a taraco, a beautiful bird? Look at the intricacies there in the eye. These guys live with us at the zoo. Some people think, some people think that that's hair, and they've got this mohawk. But really, those are feathers. All birds have feathers, only birds have feathers. They're amazing animals. When I think about these guys, I think one thing. This is what I believe, I wonder if you believe this. All living things deserve respect. All living things deserve respect. Awesome. I know you're with me. All living things deserve respect. What? Did something, did I lose you? Oh, the roach. I mean, what's so wrong with the roach? Can somebody remind me? What's so wrong? They've got antennas. Butterflies have antennas. They've got wings. Butterflies have wings. They've got jointed appendages. Butterflies and beetles have jointed appendages. What's so wrong with the roach? All right. Hey, what about this? All living things deserve respect. And we've got to create a better world for animals of all kinds. And it's going to be left up to one, one thing. And you know what that is? You. This is you. Can you believe that? This is you, a human embryo at eight cells. Two cells came together and merged and started multiplying. That's what you look like at eight cells. Isn't that incredible? You are a miracle. You are so highly and amazingly made and designed. You are one of a kind. You are unique and you are filled with power and you are the only hope for animals that are left today, for the wildlife that are left today. Eight cells right there. And now look at you, take a look at yourself. Trillions of cells, you've been busy. You've been real busy. You're an amazing thing. Our home is amazing. Our Trinity River, it's where we get all of our drinking water right here in Dallas. 700 miles goes right to the ocean. Half of Texas gets their drinking water from the Trinity. The Blackland Prairie, which Trevor's gonna tell you a lot more later, the most endangered ecosystem in North America, right here in our greater Dallas area home. The Great Trinity Forest, did you know about this? These are all photos from our home. 6,000 acres, the largest urban hardwood forest in North America. It snowed a few years back, and I was out there with my friend Sean Fitzgerald, a photographer, and look, he snapped this photo while we were out there. We couldn't believe what was in front of us. These coyotes came running through the snow. It was amazing. And then before we know it, they stopped and they turned up. And oh, 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 oh. 
They started howling, a chorus howl right there in front of us. We couldn't believe our eyes. We're like, are we in some nature video? It was incredible. Our home is filled with amazing things, with amazing animals. How about the painted bunting? Has anybody ever seen these? They're not here right now. They're down in Latin America in the tropics, but they spend all summer here. This bird looks to me like it flew through a wet rainbow. Absolutely amazing. Hummingbirds are here too. They migrate. Did you know hummingbirds fly back and forth like a lot of migratory birds across the hemisphere? Birds connect through migration in our hemisphere like nothing else. 17 hours nonstop flight across the Gulf of Mexico. They weigh less than a French fry. It's fly or die, man. It's incredible. Hummingbirds. This is that woodpecker I was going to tell you about. I wanted to show you a quick video. It's the book I was reading, The Imperial Woodpecker. We lost it to extinction. Animals are strong, they're resilient, they can do amazing things, but this, this guy is gone. He's extinct, and that's what I need your help fighting against today. This is the only footage we have of the imperial woodpecker, about double almost the size of a crow. This is a female. Do you see your crest kind of bouncing around? The females have a black crest. The males had a sharp pointed red crest. That's all we've got left right there. That species, gone forever. That's it. We've got to turn extinction around. It's not just birds. This is Hadia. She lives with us at the Dallas Zoo. Look at that face. The stripes on her face are as intricate and as unique as your fingerprint. No other tiger has stripes like that around their face. It's distinctive. There's only 3,000 tigers left right now in all of Asia. 3,000 roaming wild, we used to have about 100,000. Elephants, under incredible pressures. You're not hearing about this, that's why I'm here, to try to get your help. We lose about 96 elephants a day to poaching. 96 a day. People are killing them for those ivory tusks. That's one every 15 minutes. Even right here at home, the monarch butterfly. I mean, one of the most beautiful insects, the only insect that we know that migrates collapsing, its population collapsing in front of us. We've got to turn that around. Think about the oceans. All seven species of sea turtle, out of all seven species, all are critically endangered except for one, being impacted by a host of things. I got to stop for a second. Will you help us create a better world for animals? We're in an extinction crisis and we need your help. I'm glad you're interested because we've got a woodpecker right now that's only about 10,000 left. There used to be a million, the red cockaded woodpecker. You're saying to yourself, well, what can we do? Sure, we'll help. What can we do? We can plant trees. We can plant trees together. Woodpeckers need trees. So do a lot of other animals. You can go out to the forest and plant and plant an urban canopy right here. What about sea turtles? Sea turtles are impacted by litter pollution. I picked up this bottle on the beach been eaten by sea turtles. See these bites taken out of it? This probably came from a parking lot right here in Dallas. When rain hits, it flows down the river and flows down the, uh, the, the road, right down into a storm drain, goes out into the creeks and streams. All the water in our area that comes and sweeps our, river, our city clean through rain ends up in the Trinity River. Then 700 miles later, all the way to the ocean. And sea turtles mistake these plastic bottles for their favorite food jellyfish. They eat this plastic and it impacts. 90% of all sea turtles that wash up on the beach have stomachs filled with plastic. You can help us clean this area up. Litter pollution is a lot more than beautification issue. It's all about wildlife conservation. Join with us and help us clean up the river. Join us and help us clean up creeks. Get your school together and let's organize. Maybe you could take a pledge like these teachers. I pledge to take, pick up 10 pieces of litter pollution every Tuesday. 10 on Tuesday, every tw Tuesday. 28,000 of us have taken that pledge so far. Maybe you could lend a helping hand to monarchs. What can we do? We can plant native plants. We can restore habitat. We can plant milkweed and other plants that they need to live. We did that at the Dallas Zoo with a vacant lot. One year later, you're not gonna believe it. It made me get chills. One year later, I was walking through. Can you see it? A vacant lot, we planted about 100 plants that Monarch needs in it. One year later, boom, Monarch caterpillar. I couldn't believe it. Of course, I know habitat restoration works, but I couldn't believe it right there in front of my eyes. What about elephants? Man, you're thinking, what can I do for elephants? 
Elephants need our help like nothing else. You can come out to the zoo and see baby Ajabu, and when you see him, you can look into those eyes like I do, and you can say, I will pledge to never buy ivory. I will never buy ivory, and I'll tell five people why. I'll spread the word about the ivory crisis. I'll spread the word about elephant conservation, and I'll help. You can, right now, consider a career in wildlife conservation. You can do stuff with your daily life, but you can devote your career to this. Do you want to be outside? Do you want to have fun? Do you want to help other people? Do you want to help wildlife? Consider a career in this field. Be a zookeeper. Be a veterinarian. You know what you could do? You could work with penguins. Yeah, you could work with penguins, just like Haley and Ryan here. Any takers? Anybody want to work with? OK, good. I've got some. These are our penguin friends. <laughs> Aren't they amazing? That's awesome. Can we get a selfie, Ryan? OK, really quick. We'll turn our backs. Thanks, y'all. These are our penguins. They're African penguins, everybody. They need our help. We lost 90% of their population over the last few decades, 90%. They need our help like, ne like never before. They're sentinels of the ocean. They're letting us know what's happening in the ocean. And some people say we've lost half the life of the ocean since 1970, half the life in the ocean. These guys are impacted by plastic pollution, by climate change, it's as simple as turning off the lights when you leave the room. They're impacted by seafood, overfishing, and unsustainable seafood harvesting. We can commit to sustainable seafood. Thank you guys so much. They're amazing animals. They smell like fish. They're amazing animals, and they need our help. I wonder, and again, will you help us create a better world for animals? The bald eagle is a story of success. It's not all bad news. We're turning this thing around. With people like you, we're turning this thing around. Once on the endangered species list, now flying all across our nation. We can do it. It's possible when we step forward and are commit ourselves to it. Black land, these black-footed black ferrets, seven. We had seven left. Seven left. We joined together. Ooh, they're feisty. We had seven left. We worked together, volunteers, zoos and other conservation organizations, and we had volunteers come out and help us, 2,800 now. The California condor, 1982, we had 22. That's a face only a mother could love. I love, 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 love condors, the largest of all the vultures. These guys, 22 left in 1982, 450 today. We're turning it around, y'all. We're doing it. They're soaring over the Grand Canyon. What about the whooping crane? Got down to 14. The tallest bird in North America, about five feet tall. Unbelievable, 14 birds left. We worked hard, we brought them in, we brought them into human care and we let them safely reproduce. We introduced them back into the wild with conservation organizations across the country. Now, close to 600 birds flying. Had to teach them how to migrate again, some of them, with ultralights. How to dress up in crane suits and use a puppet to feed the young. Had to go to extraordinary lengths, but we did it. And we're turning this thing around. Everybody, we need your help. We just need your help to create a better world for animals. I hope you'll consider joining with us. You, your power, your uniqueness, your strength, your mind, your voice can change the world for animals in the middle of this extinction crisis, I hope you'll join us. Thank you.